Hi guys, my name is Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today I want to talk about failure and uh, this is something that, that kind of has, has rolled around in my head for a while um, just because there are lots of people who are very quick to judge what failure is, what failure isn't um, and also to, to kind of impose on people um, when they think that that other person has failed um, that they just need to give up, that they just need to conform, that they just need to do as they're told. And sometimes, yeah, in a very small number of occasions, that's correct. But in many instances, that isn't correct. And I kind of want to go through it um, kind of now in a way that we... Oh, excuse me. In a way that we can go, this is the wrong way to react to failure. As, a, as the person who has failed, and this is the right way to react to failure. Um, and I want to go go through it in that way so that we can see the ways that we could potentially slip up, as well as the ways that we can do what needs to be done through our kind of progression and growth and development through failure. Like, um, whenever you, you can't really get past. Um, talking about failure without the whole Thomas Edison thing being brought up uh, where it's like someone asked him kind of after he had failed to create a light bulb properly uh, someone kind of asked him kind of about all the failures and he went no I've, I've not had any failures though I've just learned a hundred or so ways how not to make a light bulb and that that's a reframing of it that then means that he's still open to trying new things and developing and, and learning from that conflict between him and his problem. But let's take a look at the wrong way first, because the wrong way to react to these things is, is kind of fairly short and sweet. There are three points to each of this, but there's more to expand on uh, with the, the three points for the right way to approach it as opposed to the wrong. So the first thing is to deny that you've made a mistake. This is something that I've seen so many people do and it's like you failed you got it wrong and all the rest of it no I didn't get it wrong X Y and Z was was the reason why X well, you know I'm, I'm I'm not wrong it's not terrible um, I'm, I'm you know and it, it's it's a case of going no hold on you need to stop take a breath and accept when something isn't going right because if you're denying it then you're, you're, you're keeping yourself stuck in that one position. You can't move outside of it. So there's no opportunity for success because you're just hugging the failure and not letting it go. The next point is chasing after your losses. You know, this is what we see with gamblers a lot where it's like, oh, well, they'll lose a whole load of money and that's a failure, that's a loss. Um, but then they'll go away, get more money, come back, sit at the same table to win back their money it's like to try and erase the mistake, to try and just whitewash over the thing that they did already. Because, you know, they can still come away better off, right? No, have your limits. Know where those limits are. Don't just chase after those those things that have already gotten away from you. You know, it, it only ever creates this downward spiral. And then the last thing... Um, is kind of editing of your history around the failure that you made. And it's like you, you try to convince yourself that the mistake doesn't matter or bundling it in with with um, other advances that we've made to reinterpret our failures as, as successes. Now, there are two ways to do this. One of which is the way that Thomas Edison did where he was like, well, no, I've... I've tried x number of new things and each one was a success at showing me that that wasn't the way to proceed yeah that's experimentation process of elimination in in this regard though it's a case of going oh well yeah i got sacked from from that job or oh yeah i i i destroyed my marriage but you know i'm better off without them anyway you know, it's it's not something that you really necessarily mean or that you have any kind of evidence for, but it's the kind of thing that we do just to try and make ourselves feel better. So how is it? How how do we approach this in a better way? Yeah, what's the right way to approach failure? Well, the first thing, 
as per the, the Thomas Edison quote, simply put, try new things. Yeah, expose yourself to new ideas, uh, find new approaches, go and look at the ways that other people have failed and then succeeded afterwards in similar situations to you, and go and give it a try. What a, you know, you're you're sat in a negative state after a failure. The state of trying pulled you back up into a neutral one because you're looking for a new result. If this ends up with a negative again afterwards, fair enough. But then try again. Eventually, something is going to push you into a positive state. And once you get into that positive state, you've succeeded. And hopefully it will be a substantial enough success for, the, for then you to have whatever it is, it is you wanted from that success to progress. So it's something worth, worth keeping in mind there. Now, these next two have kind of more uh, to discuss around it. Now, one of them is experiment where failure is not the end of the game. Yeah, like Thomas Edison had his lab. You know, he could fail at making light bulbs all day, but it wouldn't ruin him, destroy him, cr you know, crash his, his life into the ground or anything like that. In which case, you, you need to find that safe space to fail. Yeah? Um, you need to um, look at life as a, as a way of going out and finding those new experiences, finding those new things to test and work with, just in case one of them that you may never have considered before turns out to be that positive thing that gets you to where you want to go. And it's very much, again, like you can create a safe space in terms of a, an actual physical space you know, um, be it waking up before everyone else so that you're not facing ridicule for what you want to do, uh, working late to try out some stuff um, the, the, to see if you could then present it to get that promotion or raise that you wanted. You know, you can you can create those extra spaces to try and find the, that area for you to succeed, but. It doesn't. None of that will really necessarily matter if you're always too hard on yourself. You have to be open to failure, and you have to be open to moving forward and and stuff like that. You have to give yourself permission to accept that you're human, that you're imperfect, um, that you are going to make mistakes, you're going to fail, and that tomorrow you will do better. And that's something I've talked about in a whole load of videos. It's just about giving yourself permission to work past things because you're you're the boss of you if you don't give yourself permission to do it then you're not going anywhere you're stuck you know and that's tough you know once you get stuck it can be very hard to get unstuck you know seeking out new things taking opportunities when they present themselves to you as long as you aren't going to kill yourself by doing it is a great idea it's worthwhile it's definitely worth doing now the last one that I mentioned, that I want to mention here is um, the, that you need to recognize when you have failed. And this in itself can be hard because we've always been told that persis like persistence pays off. And in, re in some regards, things like social media, things snowball over time, as long as you don't disrupt and destroy everything that you've built from the, the beginning, it's going to eventually grow. It may very well be very slow though, so, you know, it can't be something to be relied on, but it will snowball over time. There will be that growth simply due to the prevalence and, and substantial nature of social media in the world today. But then, you know, if, if you've got uh, limits, deadlines, other things that you need to work for, then persistence may not always pay off because you might not have the time to be persistent. And so there are times when you need to cut your losses. If you're running up against a, a brick wall time and time and time again, let go. You know, it's, it's one of those, those things where it's tough to do, but it's something that we need to do. And if it's a very straightforward thing to recognize, you know, you've tried this exam several times and you just can't win at it it just doesn't seem to make sense to you it doesn't work is there a way that you can move past it 
if you're going to just push and push and push and fail and fail and fail, then maybe it's just not for you. Find another path. There is always another path. But sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a genuine failure or if it's just a road bump. And so we need some more kind of fact-finding tools, right? The first one is people. Um, gathering feedback. Looking for evidence in what people are seeing, advice from other people. But make sure it's not just one person. Have a bit more of a, a big dig around for advice from people that know you, from people that don't know you. Um, you know, have those... Um, those areas that you can just go and dip into to look for stuff because that feedback potentially again maybe from a place that's very familiar with your situation that has dealt with it in a way that just hasn't occurred to you and so in addition to realizing that you failed in the first place it might also have a way for you to proceed afterwards the next thing is is you need to think about this as we've talked about before like a scientist like a detective like an investigator and by doing so you need to remove your emotions from the equation you know it's important to be kind of removed professionally removed from the situation that you're dealing with because you know that way you're forgetting whether or not you're you're ahead or you're behind or how invested you are in it how much time you've spent on it all that kind of thing and you need to look at it just in terms of, of costs and losses Sorry, costs and benefits, profits and losses. Um, you know, you need to see which just weighs out numerically. You know, what do you have more evidence for? If it feels really bad, but actually you've got more gains than you have losses, then great. Chances are you're just you you're running through a rough patch, and it's going to be really uh, a bit of a pain in the ass. But you're going to get out that other side, and it's going to be more substantial to you. It's going to be more worthwhile. Otherwise, though. You know, you're looking at it, and it's it's the other way around, and you it feels really good, but you're losing so much more than you're gaining. Um, you know, and again, sometimes it can be really hard to tell. Stuff takes time. Um, evidence takes time to materialize and to condense. But again, if if you've got that that way of of balancing stuff out and just looking at it, kind of dispassionately, then it can give you more of a lens to look through to see then where you need to go afterwards. And then the last thing, don't get too attached to the plan. Um, you know, if you've made a plan, that's fine, but life's gonna screw you over. Uh, plans do not work in the long run, um, especially if you've only got the one plan. You know, a, a Titanic-esque kind of plan where you've got the, the unsinkable ship, um, which is one that always gets brought up when we're talking about failure again um, but if you've got that that one huge ship that is supposed to be unable to fail and that's the only backup plan that you have is more ship yeah more doors more whatever you're still screwed don't get too attached to it look for other ways yeah have backup plans have as many backup plans as you can possibly think of try I mean when I'm sitting down with a client and we're talking about how we can move past a failure and into new stuff, we're going to have backup plans for every other obstacle that that person is going to, to think of as we go through the planning process. We're going to talk out every single one and try and get down to the root of each one so that they know how they can get past it, what they can do if it, if it comes up, and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's it's... A set of things that you that need to be paid attention to, and failure isn't a bad thing. It's only a bad thing if you react to it in the wrong way by denying it, chasing the losses, and by uh, kind of trying to edit out what the failure was in the first place. But if you're open to trying new things, if you're experimenting, but not in a way that puts yourself at substantial risk. And then, you know, when you're able to monitor yourself to the extent that you can recognize the failure and work around it, then that's why we see so many people who can fail and succeed afterwards being the people that do so well in the world today. Um, you know, Elon Musk comes to mind with some of his investments and things and his ups and downs. 
um, as someone who keeps succeeding even when he fails. Um, so yeah, those are the things that I kind of wanted to to bring to you guys today. You know, tell me how have you guys managed to to succeed as a result of failure? You know, how important has failure been to your development and the way that you've grown and, and succeeded afterwards? You know, I'm interested to know. I'm sure there are some wonderful kind of um, wisdom uh, nuggets of wisdom. That's the, those are the words I'm looking for. Nuggets of wisdom sat in there for for myself and for others to to draw from uh, if you're willing to share. So otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope you found this this useful. And I'll see you in the video later. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you found this at all interesting or useful, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video t later. Take care.